Hey everybody, welcome back to Allie's Voice, and I'm Allison Love Beatty, blogcasting today's issue, which is Dr. Faustman's research on curing type 1 diabetes. Why is it so controversial, and how has it perhaps been subliminally confirmed? Dr. Faustman realized that type 1 diabetes is associated with a lack of TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha teaches the immune system how to discern self from non-self. Upon diagnosis of type 1 diabetes, the level of TNF-alpha continues to dwindle and the body continues to manufacture the T-cells attacking islets. This continues throughout the life of a person with type 1 diabetes. When treated with BCG, the TNF-alpha level rises to normal and retrains the immune system to stop attacking the islets. Once this happens, the islets regenerate and the person regains their ability to normalize blood glucose without injected insulin. The dosing threshold for safety will be established once phase one of the human trials begins in 2007. My appointment for my first shot of BCG is scheduled for April 22nd, 2008. Again, none of us are expecting this to be a cure overnight. What they're testing for is the safety threshold. Again, um, phase one, they test the safety of the product. Phase two is when they begin deciphering what it will take in order to coerce the TNF alpha levels to come back up again. And phase three is when they open it up, and that's when the NIH gets involved and things really start moving. The New York Times published an article about Dr. Faustman's research, touting it with righteous acclaim. Almost immediately, Dr. Faustman came under attack by the nonprofit and for profits in the business of diabetes. What would one call this? I call it fun, funny business, and here's why. Not only did JDRF deny Dr. Faustman funding for her proposed cure for established type 1 diabetes, but they wrote a letter in response to the New York Times article attempting to discredit Dr. Faustman and her research. The New York Times refused to publish the letter, citing the research was thoroughly investigated and the facts were confirmed before printing the article. In response to the New York Times refusing to publish the JDRF letter, the Foundation sent the letter to each and every one of its chapters to ensure membership and donations continued without disruption. Furthermore, the Foundation then duplicated her protocol and came up with the same results they'd been attacking. If the JDRF was so disappointed with the results of Dr. Faustman's research, why did they grant $2 million to a small company to develop what appears to be a synthetic version of BCG? Furthermore, if this research is so unpromising or threatening, why did Eli Lilly secure exclusivity in licensing and collaboration agreements to this small company? This is all just food for thought in the business of diabetes, but um, let it stir. See you next time.